just joining me tonight. I'm working on the Han Solo blaster. Uh, and this one, this model was actually done by Alan Stanford. Uh, I printed it on an Ultimaker 3 uh, using PVA for support. If no one knows what that is, it's a it's an alcohol glue uh, for the support that is water soluble. And if you have a dual extruder 3D printer, this stuff is great. And all I'm doing right now is I'm using some of uh, uh, Mondo glazing and spot putty uh, to fix up the seams and places where I've kind of damaged the model putting it together. Kind of broke it off right here. <coughs> but I'm kind of cleaning up the seams so that when I paint it, it's actually going to look more like the real thing. So... That's what I'm working on tonight, just prepping it for the paint. Usually it takes a while. There's a seam right in there that, I'm, that I've been cleaning up. <clears throat> Almost I had it smoothed out so that when you go on with a good primer, that seam, we hope, just disappears. If it doesn't, you have to redo the spot putty. Well, sand it, redo the spot putty, <clears throat> and reprimer it. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, also had the, the hand grips. What else go on? I gotta find some uh, screws to actually put in there, and then what I usually do on this model is just cut it off the back here, so that it just <coughs> doesn't really attach to anything. And then I'll either use E6000 or some uh, CA glue, and basically glue these on. So. That's what I'm working on tonight. I'm working on the scope a little bit. I'm trying to smooth out this line right here. I just put the putty on there and I'm going to hit it with the 120. And I have some small strips, which is real good. Uh, you can get that Bondo putty at any automotive shop. Uh, they usually carry it. Just be careful not to get the hardener the Bondo Hardener, which comes in a very similar package. I've done that once before. Get home and like put it out and like put it on and it's just like, why isn't it setting up? Why isn't it hardening? And then you look on the package, it's just the hardener, which means that you have to buy the paste. Uh, this is <clears throat> a spot putty that basically is for uh, hairline cracks. Uh, it works on all kinds of uh, uh, metal, wood, fiberglass, uh, and sand it primer paint. So it's great stuff. And that's usually how you can get rid of a lot of the seams on your props, is to use some of this. And then just sand it down smooth. And it's going to make it look like a fluid one piece item and no seam there from where you glued it. <clears throat> also, if you can, uh, I got this at an automotive and this is a little sander br brick and it's kind of squishy. Uh, really great to do the curves and everything like I'm doing right here. And if and it also keeps your hand from cramping up as much. Uh, a lot of times when I sand with just a piece of sandpaper like I was before, I find that my fingers start to cramp up a lot. But uh, this is the part that usually takes a lot of time other than the <coughs> taping on the painting. So. But you see how it's getting all smooth there and here when you just wipe off a portion of it. And right there you can see where the crack was and it's slowly disappearing. And it's going to look like the smooth scope that it was in the movie, which I think on this pistol is from <clears throat> A New Hope. 
correct me if I'm wrong. Please do. Uh, and I do believe this is off of a 22. It's a 22 rifle scope uh, that they used on this one. Uh, later on in Empire Strikes Back, and I do believe in uh, Return of the Jedi, they're actually using the this, this same uh, sight that's from the, uh, the Sherman tank. And it's put on backwards, I think, just like the blasters for the E-11s, <clears throat> which gives it a unique look. But... Uh, First step is to get it all sanded down, looking good, and then we'll clean it off, wipe it down real good, let it dry, and then we'll primer it. And on this one, I'm going to go with a uh, kind of like a flat black, and then I'm going to go back over it with a uh, kind of like a copper. highlight around the edges and the dial to give it some uh, aging to it you know but you got to do it just the right amount so that it looks used but loved is is the uh, phrase that I like to use used but loved and that that goes with most weathering in the Star Wars universe is, is that you want to make it where it's used but loved like they take care of their equipment but it has the worn marks like oh it's been used a lot <laughs> and I think that's sometimes that's where people go a little bit too far is that they make it look like it just came off of a battlefield and that's not quite the look you want you want the look of of where it's been used but cleaned and well taken care of unless you're actually doing a film and you're in the midst of a battlefield which I know there's some members out in uh, California that do a lot of filming and there's a whole family out there and <clears throat> if you uh, get on there they do a great job for the Legion and the whole family participates. The whole family's in in costume. So if I go, hey, well look at that. Someone actually joined. <laughs> hey, Randall, how are you doing? Yeah, this is uh, my Han Solo blaster, and I'm just doing the uh, glazing and putty filling on the parts that uh, should be smooth with no seams. Uh, the biggest part is like right in here on the trigger. This is all supposed to be one piece and solid. There's actually a seam here that I've been filling up, and a few seams on the outer body that before I prime it. Clean it off there where you see where I've already used the putty. But so far this one's looking pretty good. I'm just trying to do some of the finished sand work on the scope. And yes, I did break it right there and had to fix it. Ooh, nice. Doing coloring on your phaser. Did you find the proper blue? Because I know your phaser has a blue color to it. <clears throat> oh, cool. Yeah, I can't wait until you finish that looked like it was going to be a really nice model to put together see I'm 
I'm, I want to use some putty on this edge <clears throat> where the ridging's just not quite sanding out. This is very good to show you kind of how I uh, use this putty. And basically I put it on a glove and, and I just dab just a little bit on my finger like that. And it kind of sets up quickly. I mean, it, I mean it won't set up instantly, but it does set up quite quickly. So you kind of have to work fast on applying it to a certain point. But I'm just rubbing it in and just letting it cover that part and fill in those those grooves. And you see it's starting to set up right there. And at that point, <clears throat> you're almost to the point of just letting it set and cure up. And it you almost have to tap it in at this point as it gets harder and harder. And we just got to let that part dry and then we can sand it off and it should give the ridges. I'm going to try doing the same to this end and <clears throat> just give it a nice smooth look. Because in the movie this scope is very smooth on the outside. So I'm using the, the putty just to give it that smooth feel. And you can use this, like I said, at any uh, automotive shop. They usually carry this. It's usually used for body work for doing the small little cracks on your car. And I'm talking small cracks <laughs> in the paint, in the uh, finish. Or where they actually, it's also used for when they apply big pieces of Bondo. And sometimes you'll get bubbles in the Bondo, and this can fill up where it creates those concaves in the paint job. Here I use it on props just to, to help smooth it out. And it helps you from buying a big old Dilla Bondo and mixing and putting it together. It's all pre-mixed and it's great for pinhole scratches and minor dings and hairline cracks. And that's basically what we're using it for on, on plastic. It works great. And you can also use it on other. And you can see how it's almost completely set up in some places already. And we should be able to work with this in the next few minutes. So it sets up pretty quickly. Sweet. Mm. I'm sure your phaser is going to turn out okay, even if you didn't use any uh, glazing putty. You know, these are these prints were kind of high on the on the printer, and <clears throat> I've noticed at the ends that sometimes it will have a variation, and I just can't sand it smooth, so I kind of cheat and use the putty. That's a nifty little trick. And sometimes I just use it just to hide little minor cracks like on this one where this is usually a machine full piece and I still have to sand this part but I'll just go over it with a small sander and, and take care of it. have to look for my detail sander later on but <clears throat> while that's setting up we can work on other pieces yay
this is the tedious and slow part is this sanding and checking, sanding and checking. Well, Randall, are you streaming your uh, phaser? side that actually gets glued onto the blaster. So I kind of want to rough it up before I put any form of glue on there. And I'm kind of just rough sanding on this a little bit. <coughs> From the pictures, as far as I can see, this is about the area that this is going to go into. Uh, this piece right here, uh, the guy who designed the print, uh, even though the scale is correct this way, this seems to be, uh, on the photos of the actual prop, it goes out a little bit longer. And would actually go back to this line on up to this line of the, the heat sink. But I'm not going to complain because I didn't have to do this wonderful work. So. Alright. See you in a little bit. Sorry your sound's messing up. Could be mine. Uh, my stream rate isn't all that good tonight. So, I hope this sounds okay. It's a different light here, so you can see the uh, other side of it. I'm um, going out this uh, coming up Wednesday to uh, finish up the Jedi belt. Kind of excited about it, too.
<laughs> uh, that sounds great. I wouldn't mind you crashing by. Give Robin some uh, company. Maybe you can talk to her. Um, I think we're gonna try to go in the the morning because Robin has to work in the uh, in the evening. Which morning, uh, while you're on Christmas holiday, turns out to be closer to about ten. <laughs> Sanding. Okay, sounds great. Are you having a whole bunch of family down? Ooh. Yeah, she's interested. <laughs> Definitely in learning that. So I'm going to make her interested enough to check the chat now. I know you're talking about me. <laughs> We're talking about Yanni. I know. I don't even have to look at the chat to know who you're talking about. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Oh. Well, let, let's... Let's see here. Might have to turn on the, the tree here so y'all can look at our bush. <laughs> Give me a second here. <laughs> might make you sick or nauseous and but uh let's see if I can't uh, uh there's our tree it's real short this year might get in trouble for the Harry Potter there Wow, that's a busy weekend there, I tell you. That'd wear me out. Only drawback of the putty is is that you gotta watch your detail not to putty out your detail.
on the item. So I always go around the edges and with a small file like this and kind of make sure they're clean. One of my pet peeves at going to a con and looking at other people's work is that they didn't take the time to to actually go in and putty up the seams or correct the seams on a prop. The ones that impress me that are the ones that you kind of go hey did he just steal that from the movie set but even the ones that are close like like I said this one isn't perfect but it looks close enough to pull it off I hate to see a chaos Christmas at your house. Uh, if this one's a calm one. See, last time I did this, I did the mistake of putting it up here. Which is where I, where I thought it was supposed to go. And... Uh, Actually, looking at the pictures, it actually goes down here as close as you can get it down. So I'm kind of resting it up on those two deals where it's catching. Kind of checking that out before I. Uh, to glue this down as I kind of want this piece on here when I when I go for uh, primer paint so and I'm using the ye shall not make a mistake glue for this piece this is a Zappagap CA glue I get this locally at uh, Storm Crow and I probably need to get back out there because mine's looking like gel. But it still works. So I'm just going to coat this real good right here. Make sure I don't glue my fingers. It's going to give me a little bit of play but not much on my two marks there. some pressure and then uh, I use this substance called zip kicker this is an instant cure uh, I'm working on a Han Solo uh, blaster it's a DL44 It's all set up and I can actually start cleaning it off. So, give you an idea. Put this on here correctly. Goes on like that. And you have one side. Move it over to the other side. And then, uh, 
Come on, hand guard. Put this one on here. Gives you a better idea of what it's going to look like. <laughs> oh, what is Robin working on? Ah! Oh! <laughs> Uh, Robin's working on a gift for the daughter, which, uh, she's traveling right now. She should be back here shortly, but it's a, uh, uh, a purse to go with, uh, to go with her, uh, Pokemon dress that she made uh, and basically it's just like a little clutch purse that she's making made out of the same fabric that she made her uh, Pokemon dress uh, if we're careful we might can talk her into bringing it over to, to the camera real quick uh, has this little latch opens up The important one. I see how you are. Like that worked. It's on there. Okay, it looks like our uh, Bondo on our scope on the ends have cured. So work on that. Make more of a mess. <laughs> yeah, she's a big Pokemon fan, so Uh, no, that's actually the glazing putty that I put on it. Uh, the filament's actually a uh, kind of like a gray filament. It just makes it easier. Uh, the gray is easier to work with to see problems, especially if you're using like this uh, red glazing putty from Bonda. And then I'll shoot it with a, a primer gray. But this is just to fill in some of the small uh, imperfections and kind of help it smooth it out.
Now, unfortunately, it just makes a mess. some of this and all it's doing is giving me this nice smooth surface now where it's covered up a lot of the ridges and imperfections and the seams from the 3d print so it looks like it's all one solid piece And I'll probably stream uh, once I have it primered. I'm not, probably not going to stream primering it because I do that out in the garage. And I don't want to take the laptop and everything out there. And knowing me, I'd probably uh, primer the camera. Starting to look really good. Let's see. Now one of these, this one right here, I'm going to have to reprint because it kind of broke off right there. Couldn't find the other piece. But I currently have a item on the bed right now, which won't be done for another few hours. It's been going on for 
a day or so. But uh, these will glue on and get matched up and make her down. It's starting to look like a Han Solo's pistol. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, Randall. Thank you for hosting me. Small things like that happen every once in a while. Just break a piece and have to reprint it. But that's just sitting in there, just lovely. I love it when a plan comes together. Now, on the actual prop, I wonder how many times they had problems with this slide when they were actually shooting with it, hitting the, uh, the scope holder. Uh, well, I'm using automotive primer, which I'm going to uh, put my base coat on. Uh, it puts on a little bit of a thicker coat, and if you let it set for a good... 24 hours you can then sand it and rework on it really nicely sometimes I don't wait that long and it does cause problems but if you're using automotive primer please wait the allotted time <laughs> before you work on it I'm just gonna throw that out there right there uh, by my own mistake I have tried to work on something a little bit quicker than the uh, set time and it caused problems on the final product uh, then I'm thinking about using some airbrush paint this time, but uh, to do some of my detail work. But I'll get you the paint that I'll probably be using for the black, so just give me a moment. I love using the acrylics, especially the, the metal based acrylic. And uh, I have this black metallic that I usually will mix in a little bit of the uh, gunmetal gray. And I'll put in one drop of the gray to three drops of the black. Um, and then I'll use the antiquing copper for some of the edging around the edge here. And then sometime for weathering, I'll go in and use a little bit of rub and buff. And with rub and buff, if you've not used it before, it's a unique type of paint that you put it on and you let it set for a little bit and then you buff the hell out of it. And what most people do wrong with rub and buff is that they don't go through and then uh, uh, buff it out. Uh, do I have a problem with it being sticky? Um, if I do a primer coat on the uh, actual device and sand it down and get it prepped, usually I don't have a problem with it being sticky. Axe throwing on ESPN. Well, if I had cable, I'd be watching that. But uh, I don't have cable. <laughs> we have internet here. It is all that you need.
Even though watching axe throwing would be nice. We actually uh, got rid of our cable uh, last year. We've been out without cable for a year now. And to be honest with you, I don't really missed it, miss it that much. <laughs> Darts with axes. Hey, that's something somebody in Texas probably thought up. Or in a southern state. <laughs> I don't see any polos. So, Randall, what type of paint are you uh, are you using? Are you using an acrylic paint or are you using a uh, spray paint?
What's she do? Bought a new bed set, I'm sure. No, not a new bed set. I would have taken a new bed set over the whole deal. Huh. Got this thing all sanded out so I can get in the priming. Probably not going to prime tonight because the temperature has dropped. And I'd probably have to soak the primer in some very hot water to get it up to temp so it goes on smoothly. Probably still going to have to do that anyway, even though the garage is relatively warm. Because the primer is an aerosol, so. Well, what do y'all think so far? <laughs> and Earth. So This is going to about call it for me tonight. We got to go take care of some pets. And the daughter just got back in. So, hey, y'all have a good night. And I'll talk to y'all later. Well, hi, everyone. Nice to see you this evening. Uh, I'm working on a Han Solo blaster and uh, hopefully uh, I'll get some more work done. I'm doing some paint touch up on it uh, after I did a little bit of uh, wet sanding and what I have mixed in here is uh, some of the gunmetal uh, metallic and some flat black. I'm going to mix that up real quick. Uh, you might ask, why do you want to uh, put a flat with a metallic? It's just to help take out some of the shine in the, uh, in the paint. Because sometimes too much metallic will, will almost make it look like it's a little bit much touching up that edge. I'm trying to be very careful here. More this metallic premix metallic. <laughs> Not a lot of metallic to it really, but enough to 
give it a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a metal look. And a lot of that won't happen until I put the clear coat on. I will be putting a clear coat to kind of like finalize the, the paint job so that the paint job doesn't get messed up. So, just making sure I don't have any more places here. These will just be touched up a little bit. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Uh, I have people, I have friends of many religions, so, you know, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, uh, and for my wonderful pagan friends out in Arizona, Apple Yule, or Winter Solstice. smart yeah. saw some spots in here where I just wanted to get some color and where I overdid some of the rub and buff just wanted to dry brush that out so that always good to go over your paint and paint it again just to make sure a bit of dry brushing on these got a little bit too heavy on the uh, rub and buff actually supposed to be silver not uh, copper or bronze which it kind of got on there and that wasn't actually from rub and buff that's actually from uh, this uh, anti-copper uh, I use a mixture between anti-copper and uh, uh, the copper a Spanish copper rub and buff. I haven't done the Spanish copper yet. Kind of want to get this kind of done. It's looking good. A little bit of spot back there. But uh, as I was talking the other day about the uh, scope you can't even see where these two pieces actually connected together it's roughly about there but because of that uh, wonderful spot putty uh, the Bondo spot, put, spot putty you don't see a seam and that's the same right here and on through here it tries to kind of goes into one piece now and it's very hard to see where that seam is now unless you get really close and I can probably bring it up there close enough that you can kind of make it out but at a far distance you're not really gonna make it out that much and if you do you got some keen eyes so now uh, I haven't gotten crazy with an airbrush yet. Uh, still trying to learn how to use an airbrush on props and how to get everything kind of smoothed out with it. So it's a technique that takes practice and I kind of didn't want to practice on this. I'm, I know my skills with a brush. Are probably a little bit better than I could do with an airbrush. And uh, th those who miss this sort of build, I will be uh, posting this up on YouTube and editing the whole thing together so you can see all the 
bits and pieces. This piece right here, just even with the, the spot putty, just didn't come out. And that's mainly because during the painting, I had kind of broken off the back here and had to re-glue it. So it was just a little bit off. Uh, but it's not really going to be noticeable as a prop as uh, it's going to be in your grip and in your hand. Some people might notice it, but it will suffice and get by. So. Now, let me, uh, I'm going to go get me a water cup, clean out this brush. And then we'll try doing some of the, uh, uh, I might get me another brush, but I still need to get this one in water. But some of the Spanish copper around the scope and see if we can't brighten up the ends just a little bit. I kind of want to take them down with the black around the edge. Not really happy with the, the way it turned out. So since it's just acrylic over acrylic, I'm just going to kind of brush it down and see if we can't uh, get a better look on it. Uh, just barely tapping the brush into the paint. I don't want to get too much paint in there. I don't want to take all that copper look off of it, but I want to tone down that uh, that antique copper down some a little bit, hoping that the the Spanish copper might turn out a little bit brighter when I rub it in. Well, first I apply it and let it set a little bit, and then rub the hell out of it. Acrylic usually dries pretty quickly. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, I'm going to kind of let that set. A little bit of that anti copper going, coming through. Sec, let me go get a cup. brush into some water. I'm going to get this brush and we're actually going to open up. I, I like putting the uh, rubbing buff in a plastic bag because sometimes these little files will basically leak out. They have some fumes to them. Be careful. I'll put a little bit on here. This is a Spanish. Oh. Let me get some out there in the mouth. This is a Spanish copper. So it should be a little bit darker copper. I have to get it down there in the fluids and get it mixed in real good. If this is the copper I really want to use for this, but this is a little 
bit darker. I'm just gonna put it on the edge here. to switch out with uh, another type of a uh, copper that I have it's a not the rubber buff but it's another waxed base uh, type of copper let's see how that looks this is a little bit darker it just takes a little bit it goes a long way on the rub and buff. This all the way around here, kind of playing down the other copper. And we'll get a paper towel here in a second. I'll show you what it does. too much in the, uh, you know, I'm going to give me a paper towel so we can clean out some of these brushes real quick. Okay. I also need a couple paper towels to uh, buff that out, so. Let's get our uh, paintbrush out of here. Probably going to have to wash that again just to get it real clean. But we'll sit over here to the side. This one. get some rubbing alcohol on this one. Let me go ahead and do that real quick and clean this up. closer to the white it was I'm not quite there but still now comes the fun part when you notice the rubber buffs kind of dry up but it starts to shine up there and like I said I don't I don't know if this is the one I really want. So, we'll do this side. Just testing out different ones. Gives it a darker look. More than I kind of want it, but uh, let's see if we have something a little bit brighter on the copper side.
Metallic Lustre. If I can get this in here where you can see it. Bring it up here a little bit here. This is a copper kettle, so it's going to be closer to this color right here. So we're going to give that a try. I'm going to do it on the back. Now, this is like a wax. And I'm using a makeup applique here for it. But you get a little bit on here. Sometimes I'll use, let's use a paper towel. So, what I'm going to do here, rub it in, it's kind of like a shoe wax. So, I'm going to go around this edge. Like this. I'm going to bring it on to the other. Wax on there. I'm just touching that edge a little bit. I think it gives it a little bit more look that we're looking for, is it? You know where where they cleaned it off and it's just starting to rub off the bluing and it's just starting to show the uh, copper metal underneath and that's what we kind of want that kind of slight bit of a shine there and uh, when we shape this with a semi gloss or a high gloss the metallic still going to be that metallic look now if you're working with rub and buff or, or, or even this stuff, if you don't buff it uh, before you spray paint it, uh, you could lose that shine. So be very careful and buff out the work because it is kind of like a, a hardened wax. And I usually give it a time for it to cure before you, you actually do your clear coat. So, got that nice little end there. Go ahead and buff it off some. And take off any excess and then kind of shine what's already there. Give it that kind of like a, a shine that, hey, was a piece of metal at one time, even though it's just, just plastic. So. It's looking pretty good. And I think I'm almost ready for my, my clear coat. Um, I got some with the metal. And I might go over this a little bit more with some of the um, other rub and buff. do want to keep this stuff inside make sure the lids closed it will dry out and this one's starting to dry out some even though it's been inside we've had it for a while um, our silver rubber buff or right here we'll probably use a little side over here silver a lot more than I have the, uh, the Spanish copper but I bring it out every once in a while now if you notice I just put a little bit of that silver there I'm not going to need much uh, and I'm just going to take it on the edge here and just get it slightly on the brush Is, uh, hit areas where you think that it would possibly 
rub a lot on. I think it's top here, you know, you might have some rubbing in and out of the holster. Not much, just a little bit. And of course around here. Here. Nice little silver hint in there. On both sides. Give it the appearance of something and it's not. Also gives it some shadowing and depth to it. Some a little bit of movement here for where you, you're touching it all the time, trying to make adjustments. Not too much. Come over here. Kind of like doing a painting in a way, and you have to think, you know, is this person going to be moving their hands over this? A little bit here around this knob. You know, it's not putting on a whole bunch. You don't want whole bunch on there. That's already got some of the fins there. We just can get on the edge of it. Probably see a lot of that right there. Always follow down the edge. Always going to have wear around the edge of something. So I'm just like taking just a little bit. Like I said, this stuff doesn't take much. That's what a friend of mine said. Uh, Chris Strong. And a real good friend of mine. He's uh, got to give him a call and see how he's holding up. But. Yeah, he's had a rough year this year. And, uh, yeah. Two kids, two young kids getting by. A lot of stress. If you're out in Lubbock, you can probably go uh, see him up at Ralph's. Keen expert in punk music, if you like punk music. Great person to go talk to, let me tell you. And we're not talking, uh, even though he's a younger kid, or a uh, kid to me, but he uh, he's from the younger generation. He knows the classic punk, so. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on this side because it seems like a lot of work on this side is Needs a little bit of cleanup. So, always think of hey, where's this gun going to be rubbing? Going in and out of the holster. And it's usually around the edges. Yeah, slight, but you know, this is a scoundrel, so you know he's pulling this thing out all the time. So, it's going to look loved but worn. Well used. ever looked at a real old pistol or, or sidearm that's been used before you'll you'll notice that the probably a little bit heavy there. Usually you get worn around the trigger area where you're moving your hand around. Like I said, you gotta be careful about that. 
problem but I think it will get on your brush kind of thick. I'm just going to go around the camera and I'll move this a little bit. Hopefully you can start seeing where the detail is coming out on this. It's just giving it a little bit of shine around the parts that are just sticking out there just a little bit. Making it look like it's been pulled in and out. Now this is what I'm calling just brushing it over. shine in there. Here comes the secret to rub and buff. You gotta rub and buff it in. And it will take off some from what you initially did. But we'll go ahead and start rubbing the stuff in. There. Just buffing it out. You see what it's doing. So it rubbed down some of that spark parts right there and give you kind of like a uh, nice worn look to it, but a well cared look. No, by no means an expert at weathering, nor do I pretend to be, but I just kind of want to make it look as good as you can. Now, still got to do a little more touch up and a little bit more work on this, and we will be ready for a final coat. Hopefully, like wet sanding and do our uh, sealer coat and kind of seal this up. But uh, thank you for joining me on this journey. Uh, I will have probably one more portion to this before I uh, post it on YouTube for y'all. And y'all have a happy new year. I hope it's a beautiful new year. 
I hope you accomplish your dreams. And remember, keep on making. That's the goal. You know, be it whatever you're good at making. I do chainmail. I do a little bit of woodworking. I do props like this. But you've got to sit there and make something in your life. It is so much enjoyable. And it's an art that's being lost in generations right now. I, I you know, <laughs> we've become this wonderful throwaway society. I don't want that. You know, I want something that we can build, make, repair. And, uh, you know, just making something yourself or being able to 3D print it like this with our modern technology is so much better than going down to the store and buying it to me because I've actually made something with my own hands and I can see what I've made. Uh, thank you for joining me on this journey. If you have any questions about the model I used, uh, it will be posted in the YouTube video when I post it. Uh, it was originally done on uh, one website. It was then reposted on another. I'll put all their credits to this uh, blaster on both of those because I'm not sure what each person did. So y'all have a wonderful evening and take care. Oh, it's still morning, so good morning, everyone. And uh, just doing the last video of the DL44. Um, just doing some wet sand. And this is roughly like a 6,000 grit. Uh, as I just uh, got the, uh, the clear coat on it to kind of protect it. So this is just getting off any... Uh, little bits of the uh, varnish that kind of maybe bubble just a little bit or any stringers. So that y'all can see the uh, final product and how it turned out. I really like to go around the handle a lot. Uh, turned out pretty nice. So. It was a little bit too cold to paint, but not bad enough. This one's just going to be a real quick one. I'm recording this for YouTube as well, so I'm just going to be on for a little bit and then off, and then I'll be editing uh, all three videos into one for YouTube so everyone can see the progress. But, uh, there you go. One DL44.
Slightly weathered. <laughs>